Alright, hi there YouTube, it's me, more Seed America, and in this video I'll be talking about PSO2 Fix Simulator. Now, I did a previous video recently talking about this, but I'm gonna redo it because I didn't like how the music in the background was all uh, wonky and it wasn't well edited, so... Uh, I'm gonna most likely edit this video so it can actually display music in the background so you can actually hear it or somewhat listen to it while I talk about PSO2 Effect Simulator. Know that this video is a bit, gonna be a bit longer compared to my old ones because they added a lot of new tabs but I'll go through them very very quickly. Understand that I'm not gonna go into a lot of details about these specific things. Most likely what you guys gonna need to do is toy around with them, look at these abilities, figure out what which one can offer what, but my later videos will go more into details about how you can actually do X, Y, and Z and how you can actually use these various abilities to your advantage and actually figure out how to use PSO2, a fixed simulator. Now before I get started, understand that you know you can play the Japanese PSO2 with English translations. I made a tutorial talking about how to actually make your Sega account, how to download the uh, excuse me, how to download PSO2 and stuff, so check that out in the description below. And know that I am slowly working on multiple other videos talking about how to get into the game, what you should do in game, and etc. etc. Some of these videos that I recently made aren't really great in terms of quality, so I might be toying around with them again. Uh, also, I might delete them again as well, so they, they will come and go. However, this one will be pretty stable in terms of me talking about X, Y, and Z. And understand that when it comes to affixing, it is important to know how to break down everything. Now, will I give you a ton of information and overwhelm you and overload you guys with X, Y, and Z? No, not really. This is why I'm breaking it down because when it comes to affixing, it's easy to get if you understand math and formulas and how the various functions work. It's not easy if you're not familiar with it, but with these videos, hopefully you guys can break it down and also figure it out. I taught a decent amount of people in-game on how to break down formulas and how to do X, Y, and Z. The only time you might have issues trying to figure out how to do something or how to make something is if it's really, really complicated, which I'll talk about in my next video going more into details about combining a bunch of high-level abilities well, in particular, these four certain abilities all together. The problem is, it's not hard to actually create these formulas. The problem is gambling to get these formulas to work and actually stay on your weapons and units. But anyways, I digress. So to get started with a fixed simulator, what you need to do is go over here to the left hand corner of the screen or roughly around this area and click on add panel. It's going to show something like this. I'll talk more about how to read this in a few seconds. but. Let's go over the various buttons. The rename button allows you to rename the panel. So if you have multiple panels, you want to organize it better, you can just rename it something. Let's say fodder formula one. And then boom, it's rename fodder formula one. The save button is the save button. If you want to save it, you can just rename it as it is and then it's gonna be in this option here, and then when you load it up, you can actually click on it, it's gonna load it up. Now these two, I don't really need to go into much details about until later, but these are just passive boosters or passive events that will kick in every now and then that can give you a bonus to getting the maximum percentage you can get. So this gave you 5%, 10% for the first one, and then the second one is very, very specific with certain abilities. The next button is the share button, which allows you to share the formula that you made. You can either use the long or short link, or you can tweet it out. And then the change log is pretty much what has changed with that current update of PSO2 Fix Simulator. You may want to use this to your advantage, especially if you're familiar with this, so you can see if they added new abilities that you can tour around with. For example, as of May 15th, 2019 you can see they added a couple new abilities that you could turn around with and see if you can make some new formulas with and see if they are transferable and also if, if they're cheaper to make or if you can use this to your advantage to make new formulas. 
Know that I'm not going to go over every little thing or give every little explanations about these abilities over here on the left hand corner or the left hand side because there's a lot of them especially with the S1, S2, S3, S4 abilities. Once again I'll make a video going more into details about the S1, S2, S3, S4 abilities because they're really really handy in a lot of ways. Do you need to grab them? No not really but if your weapon can actually get these things you may want to use them just because they're very handy to tour around with. But, tour around or look at these abilities at your own time. And if you want to know how to get them, where to get them, you may want to search it up on whatever browser you're you, uh, whatever search engine you're using. Let's talk about how to read this panel right here. So you get to see, you see six columns and then eight rows for each one of these columns. The rows represent the number of abilities you can have on a weapon or unit. The maximum number is eight, so you can work with eight abilities or lower. Anything above eight is inconceivable, it's not even possible. So with that being said, you might be wondering what's with the six columns. Pretty much the first column is the base weapon or unit you are trying to affix stuff into. It could be your 13 star weapon, it could be your 15 star weapon, it could be your 12 star unit, or it can be a 1 star weapon or unit, whatever have you. The five fodder col columns over here, one, two, three, four, five, is pretty much the uh, uh, it's pretty much the items that you can select in game so you can affix it towards your main weapon and unit Understand that it's not just five fodder columns you're working with It's not just the five items you are working with because the base weapon or unit you are Affixing stuff into can also be counted towards your formula So technically you actually have six items you are using to affix whatever you need to have the reason why this is important is because of the fact that this will increase your chances of success, increase the chances of your percentages so you can get what you need to get. Some people forget about the fact that the main column, the first column or the main weapon or unit they are affixing with can count towards the formula which kind of skews their chances, chances of getting the highest percentage. Before I get started, know that some videos prior to this you may want to check up on or you may want to view those videos because they're the basic rules when it comes to affixing. You can check that out in the description below or you can see my old playlist that I already made talking about all these different things. It's just that I'm redoing those videos to make it look better and also to have it sound better and also because there are some new things that they implemented in game that I do need to go over again or I do need to mention. But when it comes to toying around with the panels and actually getting the abilities onto this, uh, on, into these columns and rows, what you need to do is click and drag. So left click on something and then drag it to one of the columns or where, wherever have you. Understand that you don't really need to do this click and drag method all the time. Let's say that you want to have power 3 on fodder 1, 2, and 3. What you can do once you have the ability onto one of these columns or rows, you can right click on it and then click on copy to whatever fodder number you want it at. So understand that uh, this new function here to add factor, this is relatively new in the sense of episode 4, 5, and 6. So if you haven't played around with a fixed simulator in a while, and you only played around with it like during episode 2 and 3, you might be confused to this. And I'll go more into details about this in a separate video just because special add factors or special ability factors are just very handy in their own ways and they deserve their own video. The same can be said about the S1, S2, S3, S4 abilities. So. I'm not going to go too much into details about every little thing, but let's just say that these are the abilities that I have on my fodder units and I want to finalize it. So I'm on a power 3 and then maybe a technique 1. Now you might be confused to why it's at a 90% and why the second tab got grayed out. Understand that this method that kicked in is called upslotting and once again I made a video talking about it, but I'll remake it in due time. But upsliding pretty much allows you to go a slot higher than what it, it originally was or what the main weapon or unit you're fixing was. Hold on, I think I worded that wrong. So let's say you have a one slot weapon that you're trying to fix and you want to get into a two slot. You can plus one it 
So you can have two abilities onto it, but there's going to be a cost, which is upslotting and the fact that the percentages will be skewed. To tackle this issue though, the first tab is what you're going to be touring around with or be using every now and then so you can increase your chances unless you plan to gamble at 90%, which most of the time you might be. Especially if you're just touring around with uh, fodder units or weapons. So the first tab is pretty much the success ability rate bonuses or the success ability rate items that can increase your chances of succeeding or getting the maximum percentage you can acquire. Now this gave you 50, 45, 40, 30, 20, 10, and 5%. The 5, 10, 20, and 30% are pretty common. The 40%, they're a bit harder to acquire, but they're not difficult to get. You can get them through the X Cube shop. And then the 45s and 50s are actually the rare ones. And if you have a 50%, I'll most likely advise you guys to hold on to that. Don't use it unless you really, really, really have to, because those are super rare. But yeah, they just increase your chances. So if I use a 10% within this formula, you can see that it went from 90 to 100. And then the third tab talks about the guidance of life. Now this is an ability that's new to me and if you're wondering how you can acquire it and where to get it at, you can look it up on the search engine, your search engine. But it does the same concept. It will give you a certain percentage to your final fixes. So if I use the guidance of life level 2, it gives you 5%. You can see that went from 90 to 95. If I use the level 3, it goes from 90 to 100%. I have no clue what the same button does. I'm getting skim over that. And let's say these are the final bit, uh, fixes you want to go with. Uh, power 3 and Technique 1. Once you hit do to it, it's going to do this. It's going to simulate you actually fixing it in-game. Without actually, you know, using your real life items in-game and also your meseta. But let's say that I don't have any sort of boosters to this and risk it at 90 and 90. Once I do do it, you can see that out of one time, it actually succeeded, so it's 100%. Now, if I click do it again, okay, now apparently it succeeded twice again, trying to get it to fail. So, as you can see, out of the four times I tried to do this, three times it succeeded, so there's a 75% of it succeeding out of those four times. You can see that Power 3 didn't succeed, but Technique 1 did. Now, if I click on this, it's just going to simulate... Is it going to simulate it? Yeah, it's going to... It's going to continue affixing it until it gets to the point... Hold on. Let me think. Most likely, I'm going to cut away with all these pauses. Alright, so I towed around with the formula again, and as you can see, I changed it a bit drastically, but I wanted to over-exaggerate the percentage chance because the second button for this do it is gonna show you what I'm trying to say. So as you can see, I have Technique 5, Power 5, and Arm 1. You can see that the Technique and Power are at 34%, and then the Arm 1's at 85%. So if I click on do to it you can see that it failed 0 out of 1 times because it didn't transfer all of the abilities that I wanted. Technique 5 and Power 5 did not succeed. So if I click on the second button, excuse me, if I click on the second button, you can see that it's going to do a lot of retries until I actually get that one success. And out of that one success, I actually failed, it, it only succeeded 6.25%. So out of 1 out of 16 times, yeah, th this is what happens. It only, to get all three of these abilities, it's a 6.25%. So if I do that again, apparently it was able to do it a second time after two more tries after that, but it's still pretty gosh darn low. And you, you can see if you click on doing this, the percentages are pretty goddamn low <laughs> when it comes to uh, getting all three of these abilities to succeed properly. And before you actually affix it, what you want to do is click on the details so you, you can see what sort of stats you're aiming for, to see the success rate patterns, the success rate graph, and then the order that you want it in, or the order that it's going to look like when you affix it. 
pretty much that's it. Now, I know I didn't talk about this second tab over here, and pretty much these are special abilities you have to buy. Now, just depends on how you buy them. You can buy them with Mincetta or with ACs, but you can't farm for these abilities. I'll save this tab over here in its own separate video because it's going to go hand in hand with this S1, S2, S3, S4 abilities because they are also... They'll, they'll be in the same form as these things over here, it's just that you can actually farm for the S1, S2, S3, S4 abilities. But pretty much that's it when it comes to a fixed simulator. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put it down in the comments below. If you need help trying to find certain fixes or if you want to have me conjure up a formula for you or if you need help making a formula, let me know in the comments below. Once again, the fixing is pretty simple once you get down the basics, once you break it down and you be like, oh yeah, so this is why this is happening, or this is why I can't do X, Y, and Z. So thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.